Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This morning's psalm is taken from Psalm 119. And it reads, Your decrees are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. With open mouth I pant because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your custom toward those who love your name. Keep my steps steady according to your promise, and never let iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from human oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because your law is not kept. That's the sound. Celebrating two years of dating, is that right? God bless you guys. All right, Fred, here we go. 
And a lot of good things happening in our lives. Uh, God is good, God is gracious, and that's what we come to celebrate. Um, a few things to keep in mind. We've got some uh, things coming up. Uh, we're going to be ending our um, study at Karen's house about uh, the passion. Uh, we're going to have a, a study this week uh, on the 5th. And then uh, that will be our last study. And then on the 12th, uh, we're going to be watching the movie uh, Risen which is an excellent movie. We were thinking of doing Mel Gibson's Passion, but everybody was going, no, we want to do that. So we're also going to be having food, our midweek gathering, so food and Gibson's movie was not, so Risen is a much better way of uh, demonstrating, uh, you know, what Christ is all about, so we're watching that and having our midweek gathering with food as well on the 12th. And then on the 19th, where, where? at the Karen's house, Karen Dashline. So if you want to come watch the movie Risen and have some food, that's it. Karen D's house, it's right off County Farm Road. It's not that far from the intersection of County Farm and Geneva. So thanks, Karen, for hosting. And uh, on the 19th, we start a new uh, book. You want to talk about that, uh, Victoria? Got a new book? I probably wanted to talk before me, but. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so I know, I know most of you were here last week, but if you weren't, this is the Bible study that we're going to do. And it's going to take us three years, and I know that sounds horrible. But it isn't as bad, and so the books are out there, and I put the schedule in here on the inside so that you know we're going to do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then in July, next July we'll do another five, and then we'll do another eight, and in next September, so it'll be spread out over a while. So it's going to be a Wednesday, 6.30 to 8.30. The schedule is in here. The first one will be the 19th. Everybody gets a book because um, if you keep this for three years and it's paper, it will be yuck. The only thing I would suggest is you might want to use like a permanent, a little, those kind of thin permanent markers because this paper is a little glossier than it could be. But this is going to be an amazing study, so I hope that you can all come. Wednesdays at 6.30. Um, the books are out there. Please take one because it's too heavy a box to bring back to the car. So if you all take one, that will make me feel better, or okay. how we feel better. It's at the Hampton, yeah. All oh, yeah, it's at the Hampton. I think it says that. Yep. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> It'll say it on the website. It says it on the website. <laughs> it will say it on the website. Well, I cut this piece of paper off on the top of it said at the Hamptons. So, sorry. How are you? A couple of plates on the room. Um, we have been approved for the wine. So, we can uh, now. For communion, we can use regular wine. We just can't store it here, so we have to bring it here and take it back. And no other alcohol beverages are allowed. They had to rewrite the contract, which I signed and got dropped off uh, today. Uh, the other thing is we're trying a couple of new things today, so any feedback, we, we'd appreciate. Um, we're trying no speakers in the back because the acoustics here seem good enough to just use the front speaker. And we're also trying the wall instead of the screen which seems to be a lot easier and a lot clearer. So we'll see how it works out. If anybody has any comments about it, please let us know, okay? Thank you. Okay, and, and in September, uh, we've got the picnic on the 8th at the Keegers starting at 3 o'clock. It's going to be next week. No. Next week. Yes. Coming up fast. And we got a men's retreat on October 13th. That's a Saturday, so that's going to be about uh, Paul's conversion. It'll be an exciting retreat. Okay. Any other announcements? Birthdays? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in our Sunday evening Bible studies, which is twice a month, first and third Sundays, uh, we're going to have a change. Uh, we're going to do some book studies. Uh, the first one being uh, on 12 Extraordinary Women in the Bible. And uh, it's going to be a good study. It's by John MacArthur. Uh, and immediately following that one, there's a study called uh, 12 Ordinary Men of the Bible, which is a study on the uh, uh, 12 apostles and who they really were, what their personalities were, and all the things they did, and uh, how God uh, had them strong to his will, and how he can make you strong to your will. And I hope to start that on October 7th. Uh, if somebody wants to come to that, it's not regular. I've already talked with the regular people. Uh, just let me know. Yeah. Okay, so I know you're coming and I can order a book for you. Because if we don't order the books in time, it's going to be a late start. 
And remember, you don't have to pay for any of your books. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, I, I encourage you to get involved in some sort of study. Yeah, and if you, if you know someone who doesn't come in the gathering, would yeah. they like to come to any of the Bible studies, yeah. uh, please just bring them. Or if you find a Bible study somewhere else with another church, that's fine. Just go do study. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Anything else? Thank you, Rick. Well, is that extraordinary men and ordinary men? Right. <laughs> 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 Can't pretty figure that out. <laughs> 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 is it extraordinary or extraordinary? Please rise. <laughs> 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 Will you begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Amen. 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 Who may abide in God's presence? Who may live on God's holy mountain? All those who walk blamelessly and do what is right. All, All those who speak truth from the heart. Please remain standing for the opening song. the truth, and the life. 
If you come to me, you will have life, and you will have it abundantly. These words of Jesus are for us and for all time. We are loved with an everlasting love. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus. Our sin is forgiven. Praise, Praise God. God. The peace of the risen Christ be with you. And also with you. Please share the peace with one another. Good morning. Morning. The first lesson is from the fourth chapter of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land of the Lord, the God of your ancestors is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take anything away from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, in which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the people, who, when they hear all the statutes, will say, Surely this is a great nation, is wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances just as the entire law that I am setting before you today. But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The second lesson is from the sixth chapter of Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the God, in, in the Lord, and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of the truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, Keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with the boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am the ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. Here ends the lesson. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel is from Mark 7. And then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. These many talking to the Pharisees here. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. When he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, then do you also fail to understand? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart, but the stomach, and goes out to the servant? Thus he declared all foods clean. And then he said, it is what comes out of a person that defiles, for it is written from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come from fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, 
envy, slander, pride, and folly. And all these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So uh, yesterday I'm at my Walgreens in Itasca doing some shopping as I do maybe three or four times a week. And of course, the lady's talking to me and she says, so what are you doing over the Labor Day weekend? And I says, well, in honor of laboring, I'm going to be laboring on Labor Day. What are you talking about? Well, I'm going to put up four hours of work on Monday morning. And she says, why? She says, because I'm supposed to work those four hours on Friday. And Friday, I'm going to go up to northern Wisconsin with my good buddy, Gary, and we're going to be fishing. So i got to work those four hours some other day of the week. So I'm doing it on Monday morning. She goes, oh, oh, well, that's not too good of a thing. I said, well, that's okay. I'll be there by myself, and I'll get a lot of work done. It's cool. I've got to pass for the building on Monday morning from 8 to 12. You have to realize I work two part-time jobs, and some of you already know that, okay? And... Uh, I work at a title company, Chicago Title, here in Carroll Stream, and usually I work that all day Monday. And then on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, I work both jobs. I usually work from like 8 to 2 at the title company doing title searches uh, on those days. And then uh, I go uh, down to Lyle, where I work for a company called Bureau Veritas from 2.30 to 6.30. So I work two full-time jobs, or part-time jobs, you might say. And I do that on Monday, I mean on Tuesday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So I'll be with Gary on Friday, so i got to work those four hours. i got to work 16 hours at Dura Veritas. i got to get the 16 hours in. So anyway, Dura Veritas is a, uh, uh, a company called, uh, it's French for a Bureau of Verification. And they do non-destructive testing on cement and steel for roadways and bridges. And my task, and I work for Ray Monson, some of you know, and my task is to be a lead generator. And what I basically do is I spend all day on the computer uh, doing spreadsheets, uh, getting information about certain jobs that are being built, uh, certain uh, companies that are being used in those jobs, and trying to find leads. Leads are uh, people in those companies uh, that I get their, their phone number, their email, their address, so that I can give this information to our salespeople, and they in turn start making the contacts with some of these people, therefore hopefully generating some business. So it's a lead generator, that's what I am. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing Monday. And so um, at 6.15 on Friday, as I was getting ready to go home, this past Friday, uh, one of my co-workers, uh, John, who uh, was still there at that time, and he's uh, a guy about my age, but he's like a computer geek. And, and John does all this fancy computer stuff. And he's got like three big screen monitors and a huge uh, computer hardware thing, that, you know, the big towers there. And he said, Eric, you've got to come and see my new computer. He was all excited. You know, computer geeks get really excited about all the computer equipment. Sorry, but you know what I'm talking about. Right? And uh, so I was, you know, I was looking at my watch. I wanted to leave, but he said, so I go down to his little nook, neck of the woods down there, and sure enough, he's got this huge, beautiful screen. They're curved now. Some of these uh, computer monitors are curved. And, and he can actually divide that screen into three or four or five different parts if he wants. It's amazing. And then uh, his computer hard drive well, it was like this small little box compared to this huge tower that he had, which is only about five years old. And he said, well, this little box can do about two or three more amount of work as this tower. I mean, it's, it's, it, the, the processing is unbelievable. And so we started talking about the whole concept of, of how computers are just, you know, it's getting to be, you know, totally out of this world. And we, we remember when, when there was no such thing as computers, you know, before the computer age. And then he said something. He says, well, you know what? I mean, they're getting so good with computers that they're actually thinking that in a few years, they're going to be able to develop what you call humanoids, actual computerized artificial intelligence people. They're going to be walking and talking and might even be added to our labor force. Isn't that right? That's what they're thinking about. I said, well, wow, yeah, that's, that's pretty freaky. 
So I go home, and you know, when I go home to relax, I get on the TV and I start switching channels. I'm a channel switcher. You know, that's all I do. And it's, lo and behold, on the Discovery Channel, guess what pops up? Humanoids. <laughs> oh my God. And then we started talking about the whole concept of artificial intelligence and how close we are to generating actual people that can walk and talk with artificial skin. You know, I think there's a, a show on TV called uh, Westworld. I don't know if you've seen it, but it talks about, you know, humanoids. And, uh, and then they said, well, you know, the one big thing that some of these creators of humanoids are worried about is that this artificial intelligence might rebel against its creator, just like in Westworld. I think that's what's going on. And I said, whoa, that sounds familiar. This is what the, the whole Bible about? God the creator who creates this intelligent human being who rebels against him? It's like, wow! You know, isn't that what the Bible's all about? And then God says, you know, well, I'm going to just annihilate them. And he tries to annihilate them and stops just short and says, no, uh, I'm going to give you a little grace and we're going to try again. But here's a rainbow that says I'll never try to... Uh, annihilate you again. Instead, I'm going to try to work with you and counteract this rebellious nature that you're trying to work against me. And so, what we got in the book of Deuteronomy today is God reaffirming his attempt to counteract that rebellious nature by choosing a special group of people and giving them all these rules and regulations and saying to them, okay, be obedient follow all these rules and regulations, and you will become a light on a hill, a welcoming warm light through your obedience, and you will shine brightly, and you will attract all these other nations, and they'll come running to you, and they in turn will fight against this rebelliousness by obeying all these rules and regulations, and therefore we will counteract this rebellion against me. Well, we all know the story. It didn't work out too well because the people who were supposed to be obedient to all these rules and regulations were simply doing what? Going through what? Going through what? The motions. They weren't really doing it with a heartfelt desire. And so God sends his son Jesus to kind of hopefully rectify the situation and what you've got in our gospel lesson today is Jesus saying, hey, listen, guys, you're just going through the motions. Yeah, some of you might be doing it with a heartfelt presence, but most of you are just going through the motions. And it has to be an individual thing. If you want your light to shine, it has to be a spiritual thing inside you. It's not all about keeping yourself clean on the outside and not worrying about the inside. But I come to you today to proclaim that if you're going to be a shining light for the Lord, it has to go way beyond you just doing things on the exterior. You have to work on what's going on inside of you. <laughs> and you've got to cleanse yourself on the inside. Whoa. And we all know how hard that is, isn't that right? <laughs> we can all go through the motions, but what goes on inside of us, well, that's a whole different ball game. That's tough stuff. And he names all this stuff. And he says, you know, you've got to get rid of all these things and cleanse yourself on the inside, and then your light can shine. It's the battle that goes on in your heart and mind between light and darkness, between good and evil, between God and Satan. He just tells it like it is. Yeah. And he says, then your light will shine in a true sense of the word. This little light of mine, well, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't do what? Hide it under what? A bushel. And don't let who? Satan blow it out. We sing that song from the very beginning. Okay? So it's all about an individual shining light. It's all about personal responsibility. We don't blame the corporate dimension anymore. We don't look at it from a corporate perspective. It's up to each one of us to do what we need to do in order to let 
God's light shine in this world. <laughs> that's up to each one of us. And that's where the battle rages. And it's ironic that Paul in our Ephesians text is telling the Ephesians, you know what that battle's all about. you got to cleanse yourself on the inside. It's not an easy battle with what goes on in your mind and heart. Oh, yeah, everything might look good on the outside, but what's raging inside of you, poof, only God knows. And you may know. So you got to put on the armor of God. you got to do battle. I don't want to. Well, that's where it's at. No, I just want to go to ceremonial cleaning and not worry about what. No. <clears throat> if you're going to be a warrior for the Lord, a soldier for Christ, a disciple for Jesus, and take that seriously, it's what goes on in here, inside you. Whoa. And he talks about putting on the armor of God. Lists all the things that are part of that armor. And how blessed we are to have this new nature that wants to put on that armor. Can you imagine? The old nature, it doesn't fit. Old nature doesn't want that armor. It rejects it. It pukes. Get it out. No. New nature, it fits on. And then we have the Holy Spirit to boot. Isn't that amazing? To help us in that process. So God just didn't abandon us and say, well, just do it. No, he gave us the new nature and the Holy Spirit. Now, what's fascinating is that this woman at the checkout lane just kept on talking. So what else are you doing this weekend? Well, I said, we're purging our house. Purging your home? Yeah. Every time about this year, my wife, and she just can't wait to do it. And I go through all our closets and our drawers and we clean out everything that has accumulated that we don't want from last year. Oh, and I said, you'd be amazed at how much garbage you accumulate in just one year, even when you're a throwing out type of person. Yeah. Like who? Like me. And What's fascinating about purging is you not only get rid of all the stuff, and I say it lightly, but you also find a few things. Isn't that amazing? You find, oh my gosh, and guess what I found? Put on the whole armor of God, that's Victoria. Oh my God, look at this. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Really, it's a great little thing that we handed out a few years ago about uh, putting on the armor of God. And it says the personal, I mean, look at that cool? It demonstrates how it all relates to the Romans and what they did and what each piece means. And it says, here's your personal prayer for putting on the armor of God. It says, I am ready to take my stand against the powers of darkness. That's what it's all about. Darkness and light. I buckled the belt of truth around my waist for the Roman soldier. That belt is what kept everything else together. And if you don't have truth and honesty in your life, those pieces ain't just going to fit very well. I take the breastplate of righteousness, you know, with covering my heart. I stand firmly on feet prepared with the gospel of peace. That's shalom. Everywhere we go, we ought to be producing shalom. I lift up the shield of faith, you know, to protect us against the arrows of the evil one. And I place on my head the helmet of salvation so that it helps me in my mind control. Because that's where the devil has a heyday, is in your mind. Isn't that right? <laughs> I use the sword of the Spirit as the word of God. I will stand guard against the powers of darkness. I will resist temptation to guard myself from vulnerable positions. I will pray persistently for my fellow believers. And then it goes on to show how the Romans had a formation that they used it says, uh, Roman soldiers in this particular formation stood close to each other so that they could be strong, especially when they entered battle. Um, and likely, with other Christians drawing us together and strengthening us to care for one another, we can put on our armor of God and stand together. It's this whole concept of each one of us as individual lights coming together to shine, but not 
each of our lights are going to be exactly the same. There's no way that each one of us is going to have exactly the same light because God works uniquely in each one of us. There's no way. So we're all going to be slightly different shades of this. And I think God intended us to become like a rainbow to show the kingdom of God, all of us as individual lights with slightly different, isn't that amazing? Working together to create this beautiful rainbow as a symbol of his kingdom presence in this world to fight against the rebelliousness of darkness. Whoa, isn't that amazing? But unfortunately, partisan religion has gotten in the way. <laughs> That rainbow doesn't exist too much today because of all the religious, man-made religious stuff, you know, like uh, denominational differences, sacramental arguments, doctrinal disagreements, political differences, social agenda differences, you name it. We're not standing together as a as a rainbow. <laughs> it's not very evident. Isn't that? That's why the mainline denominational churches are declining. It's just the way it is. When I first, uh, when we first started the ELCA in 1989, there were almost 250 ELCA congregations in the Metro Chicago Synod. Now there's probably 180 and 90 of those can't afford full-time pastor, and many of them are on the verge of closing. Because of all this partisanship and arguments, when we all should be concentrating on one thing, our free-willed, loving and gracious response to loving and gracious God individually as freely responsible servants of Christ. That's what binds us together. We don't talk politics here purposely because we want to stand firm on what binds us together and that's the real truth. Not our personal opinions and personal preferences. There's only one preference and that's for you and I to be individual lights for Christ as freely responsible servants of Christ. I think that's what kind of makes the gathering unique. In its own beautiful way. We're never going to be a little creek, and I don't think that's what we're here. We're going to be a place of discipleship, of training. We're going to be spending three years on discipleship, as it should be. Amen. Not to further the gathering, or to further a particular denomination, but to further the kingdom of God individually in a way that God sees fit for each one of us, regardless of our situation. He's going to put us where he needs us. A couple of years ago, you might, oh, this is another thing I found while approaching. <laughs> it was a letter that I wrote to the principal of Taft High School. Remember, we were thinking about doing something at Taft uh, because they were looking for a church, and I was writing to the principal, uh, uh, Mark Grishhopper, and I said, uh, I am currently a semi retired Protestant pastor who is working with a group of worshipers called The Gathering. Uh, the gathering is unique in that it does not seek to build itself up, but seeks to build the kingdom of God by focusing on people's lives and their relationship with the Lord. We are non-affiliated, so there is no ecclesiastical, political, or social agendas, just the gospel of Jesus Christ and how it seeks to work in people's lives. Isn't that right? Have we done anything else in, what, six years? Have we? Party. Yeah, we want to party a little bit, that's okay. <laughs> then I go on to say, the gathering is quite unique in its structure, and I'm not blowing our whistle here, folks, and its approach to ministry. In fact, I would go as far as to say that there is none like it in the Chicago area, at least for now. Because we have what I call the seven positive no's. Positive no's. No official membership. People can come and go as they please. What's that all about? You're not going to find that in the churches. No pledge drives. We never talk about money. Period. No paid staff. All time and effort is donated. No building plans. We will always be on the move. Isn't that amazing? 
No political or social agendas. We don't try to influence people's thinking when it comes to politics and social issues. No church affiliation. We are truly non-denominational. Although many of us, including myself, have Lutheran roots. No desire to further the gathering. Instead, we seek to further God's kingdom, His loving and gracious presence here on earth. Considering what I've just shared with you, if it is still your desire to work with us, then we can set up a time for me to come to Taft and talk some more. Unfortunately, a few days after I wrote this uh, email to him, um, the principal, uh, Mark, uh, was diagnosed with leukemia. So he's been battling that ever since, and I think he's back on track. So I might approach him again. We'll see. But that was a connection that I made uh, through art, you know, from you know, the Gathering North. Isn't that amazing? Because that's what it's all about. And it plays itself regardless of where you are, whether at work, whether at home, whether you're talking to your neighbor, whether you're at school, whether uh, you're having a good time. You ought to be a shining light for the Lord and try to stay away from the darkness if possible. You know, this past Thursday we had our youth group meeting and uh, on the fifth Thursday of each month we just go out and do something and so they wanted to go see a movie. Yeah, at the Marcus Theater on Lake Street, you know, the Marcus Theater. And they wanted to see that new movie that just came out called Alpha. It's about uh, a young boy who gets separated from his uh, tribe, but this is like uh, prehistoric, so like right around the end of the Ice Age or whatever. And he meets this wolf who's also been separated from the pack and they join and become the best of friends and it's supposed to be the beginning of man's best friend with humanity, you know. How cool is that? And I've often said if, if I were to come, God, I would have I I used dogs because dogs are far more loving than we as human beings, but that's a whole other story. But anyway, uh, so they finally arrive. It's a 7 o'clock movie, so we go up to pay and they've canceled it. No. Yes. Uh, and all they had was the Beatles' 50th anniversary of Yellow Submarine, or Meg, the Megathon movie about the big shark that eats people. <laughs> That's all they had. Oh. We just checked. We just checked last night. Two of us. Seven o'clock. It's right there on your website. What's going on? She didn't have next, so I kind of, I got ticked off. So I was kind of rude, nasty. You? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up seeing Meg, the Megathon movie, and so on. Uh, I know, but ABC was prehistoric or whatever. And uh, when we went to get our, uh, our goodies, I, I kind of got on the lady's case that was giving us the snacks, you know, she wanted to send me down to the other, no, no, do, do it now, no. So afterwards, well, it was during the movie, I went out to get some more stuff, and I apologized to the lady at the snack place, and I also apologized to the lady at the front desk, you know, because that's what we're all about, you know. So that's an attempt to kind of still be a shining light amidst the darkness, <laughs> and I apologize to the guy, I sent him an email saying I'm sorry for behaving this way, but you see, even in little things like that, they can make all the difference because that's what we're all about. Please rise. Well, we just thank you again for uh, allowing us to be freely responsible servants of you so that we can be soldiers, warriors, and disciples for your cause to further your kingdom. Because I said before, Jesus never came to start a religion. Why would he? <laughs> Instead, he came to start a one-on-one -on -one faith based movement of discipleship to further your kingdom, and that's why we need to let our light shine. The sun's going to be praying. Amen.
So I'd like to take this opportunity to slow down what we truly believe and really hear what we're saying this morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the offering.
and that yeah. her health would be restored. Thank you, Father. Father, we want to just thank you that Lauren and I were able to be with the people we were with last weekend. All the problems they've got going on, family-wise and otherwise, and it's just amazing. We still all hold together just through love. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's, it's another family we have. Thank you. And a love for fishing, too. Yeah. <laughs> good team. And Lord, we seek guidance for Marilyn and Carl uh, from Gather North, as well as uh, Glenn and uh, Molly. Just be with each one of them in their own struggles. <coughs> Father God, I give you thanks for 33 years with my husband Friday. I thank you because without you being in the center of our marriage, to continually bring it to the marriage, Father God, I truly believe we would not be married today. There's also a lot of guns in that house, too. <laughs> I thank you, Father God. I, I thank you also for the answered prayers and for the continued blessings for all my children. Thank you, Father. Lord, well, we just give you thanks uh, that we wake up each day in the good old USA. I'm sure Ben's starting to find that out, how blessed we are in this country, regardless of our differences and our struggles. It's the only country that people die to get into, not die to get out of. And all these things we lift up to you in your most precious name, and let's all say, Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Come forward to the direction, please.